So it's Sunday. I think it's 52 degrees outside, which is unbelievable for March. And I'm at the store on my day off. It's called work ethic. Just trying to make a difference, you know? Well, let's get started. What's going on YouTube? Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, today we're going to talk about the HRN Honda lawnmowers. Uh, you know, we probably sell more walk-behind mowers than anything else in our store. And with this being Honda's more, we'll say, price point machine, it just seemed like a logical place to start. So I'm going to kind of dive right into them. The first thing I wanted to talk about and kind of simplify for you guys, if you're actually shopping for these things, the model numbers are a nightmare and it's like learning a, a second language. Every one of these are called an HRN 216. So that part of the model number doesn't change. If you want to kind of simplify it, the main thing you got to look at is the last three digits on there. And it really doesn't make sense to a lot of people. There's a PKA, which is the actual straight up push mower. It's not self-propelled or anything. We don't even stock it in my store. It's only $10 cheaper than the self-propelled one, which is called the VKA. This is kind of the one we're going to focus on today because everything's kind of based off of this this version of this mower there's a vya and a vla which i'll get to here in a little bit but we'll dive right into this here this hrn model for honda is what replaced what used to be the hrr so it's still a steel deck whereas some of their higher end mowers use what they call a neck sight material um one of the other one of the changes they did make on this is when they went from the hrr to the hrn is they did up the motor, it's a GCV 170 now, whereas it used to be a 160, not a huge difference for the residential user, but they did get about an extra horsepower out of it when they did that. Um, still an easy start, still uses an auto choke. Their easy start basically is that it's an automatic choke and there's no primer, so it's a self-priming motor. Um, Honda will tell you that it's, it's supposed to be two poles to start it. You know, the first pole, you'll kind of prime up the engine second pull it should be running with that being said i don't know i could tell you the last time i unboxed a brand new one and didn't have a takeoff on the first pull for me they start pretty well they did switch when they went from the rr to the rn as you'll notice they only have one height adjuster for the front axle and then one for the rear rather than four individual ones all the way around which is actually really nice and I've been pretty impressed with how well it works. They, you know, they've they've tried single levers on some of these before and there's always issues when you're trying to move that many wheels with one lever, so that's why they went back to the four individuals for a long time. But this seems to do all right because there's not a whole lot of stress on any individual on the individual levers. This mower's been out for a couple years now, so we've got a pretty good sample base out there and I've not had really any of these come in with any issues yet. Now this is still a dual blade mower. There's a lower one on here that kind of creates all the lift. And this top one just kind of helps chop everything up while it's recirculating under there. So to be honest, nothing mulches better than a Honda. And if anybody ever tells you they found something that does, they're wrong. So these will mulch better than anything, but they do bag really well. Um, especially when you consider you know, compared to some of the old mowers, like the old Aaron's we sold forever and ever, they called it the LM21 or the Classic 21. That thing bagged better than anything on the planet. And Hana doesn't bag as well as those do, but nobody bags that much anyway. And honestly, these mulch so well, even when it's not picking up, you don't even notice what it leaves behind. That's kind of the nice part about them. Um, they did downsize the bag on these a little bit from the HRR. You know, I think these are right at a two bushel. To be honest, who cares? You know, the average yard, it's going to equate out to one more time emptying the bag, I suppose. You'll see these referred to as the three-in-one mower from Honda. And all that is, is they've got this cool little built-in deflector. So rather than having the old school plug you'd take out, lose it in the garage, and then when you needed it, you know, can't find it. They just have this little lever that controls a door built into the back side of the mower back back in here. So 
like right now it's set to bag, which means that little door is open. All you got to do is pull this little lever up and back, and it's set to mulch now, so that door is closed off. So when I take the bag off, you can kind of see back in the tail end here. When you open that door up, now you're bagging. You close that off, you're mulching. And the reason they call it a three-in-one is your third option is you can actually open this door up and leave this little deflector in the back down and it'll actually just rear discharge. So this is what I was talking about when that deflector is down because I took the bag off but I still have this set to bag so that doorway is open back there it'll just throw the clippings out back here so realistically like I said these things mulch so well you're just gonna mulch with the majority of the time but you know, if it's the springtime, it's rained a bunch, you know, the yard gets away from me or whatever, sometimes it's easier to just throw it. This also kind of leads me to one of my favorite things about this mower. So rather than those old school wing nuts they used to use on these handlebars, these things have these cool little quarter turn knobs. So if I turn both of these on the handlebar here, there's actually, and you can kind of see the holes down here, there's a couple different positions you can put the handlebars in or in the same kind of concept you can fold the whole handlebar right over and I mean like these things fit right under a tonneau cover on a pickup you can roll them right under your workbench whatever you know especially if you don't have the bag on it you know if you're like me I'm mulching all the time anyway so I think my bag's in the rafters in the garage somewhere but that's one of my favorite things that they do on these now, while we're talking about handlebars, here's the self-propel end of it. To me, this is one of the hardest parts because when it comes to the consumer, it's just really a matter of preference and whether or not you like it. Honda calls theirs a smart drive on the HRN. What I like about this is, I always tell people it works kind of like a motorcycle throttle. So the further you twist this down, the faster it's going. And the nice part is you can actually, you know, if you can adjust it a little higher, if you'd rather have it a little higher and rest your palms on it, or you can have it a little lower and use your thumbs on it so it's got a really good range of motion and and I do personally like it but some people don't like I said it's just a preference thing just depends on what you're used to and what you're comfortable with now if you remember we talked about those last three digits of the model number so we talked about the PKA and the VKA now this is the VYA this is identical to the VKA it's still self-propelled same smart drive same deck engine everything it's identical only difference being is this one's got a blade clutch on it or Honda likes to call it a roto stop all that means is on this particular mower when I have to stop and I let go of the handlebar and I have to whatever go empty a bag move a downspout this one just shuts the blades off it doesn't kill the engine every single time so when I come back I don't have to restart the lawnmower all the time when I come back to the lawnmower I just have to push this button in and pull my lever in at the same time and I'm off and mowing again. That'll kick the blades back on for you. Now they do also make what they call a VLA, which is just the electric start. So quite literally, instead of having this on here, there would be a whole assembly here with the key start battery mounted in it. So basically you gain that feature, you'd lose the blade clutch option. They're actually the same price. They're both about a hundred bucks more than the VKA because you're, you're paying a hundred bucks for either this blade clutch here or the electric start. Now, I don't know what the issue is, but somewhere in the supply chain, you know, they if it's the switch, the battery, whatever it is, I do not have a single electric start lawnmower from Honda right now. So something, something's holding all that stuff up. But it would be, like I said, it's virtually identical still. It's the same thing as a VKA. You're just getting either a blade clutch or the electric start option for a hundred bucks more on those two. So, should you buy the thing? Keep in mind, I know I sell these things, but I don't work for Honda. There's a reason I sell Hondas, though. If you're going to spend four to $500 on a lawnmower somewhere in that ballpark, the only thing that even kind of sniffs the zip code of the HRN, in my opinion, is the Toro personal pace. And again, it's a matter of opinion, um, but I don't think it's close still. Uh, especially when you figure, you know, the, the Toro is a lot more plastic and a lot fewer features is the big thing I always notice on those. 
and it's kind of an odd self-propelled control. Um, you know, I kind of talked about, you know, that smart drive that Honda uses. You, you may like it, you may not. You can't really help that. Um, the Toros, some people love that thing on the personal pace. I don't. A lot of people I know don't. Um, so that's always kind of a hit or miss thing for people, too. You can spend a lot more on a walk behind mower, too, and, and you don't necessarily have to. That's just it. Um, you know, I have a $900 Honda sitting on my sales floor right now that we sell. Is it a better mower? Yeah, but does it cost twice as much as a, you know, HRN? Yeah, absolutely. Now, there's the other end of the spectrum, too. There's the two $300 mowers of the world, the Troy Bilts, the Cub Cadets, the Craftsman's, you know, they're everything under the MTD family tree. MTD now owns 45 plus brand names, so there's nothing wrong with those. I don't have anything against you if that's what you want to buy and, and use. They, they'll work just fine. You know, they're just not going to cut as nice and understand that when something goes wrong with them, there's not really any meat on the bone for service. Uh, a pretty minimal repair with what shop rates are anymore is half the price of a new mower. So they're basically a throwaway mower, and that's fine. Just don't expect to, you know, keep them around for a long time. You're, you're throwing them away and buying a new one when something breaks on them. And, you know, they always say you can't please everyone. I have seen some, some poor reviews, some bad reviews, like on YouTube, stuff like that. Um, unhappy customers with, with a Honda, too. And you're you're gonna have that. Sometimes it's literally just a matter of not everybody loves a Cadillac, and that guy buys a Lincoln instead. A lot of those, though, I have noticed, and one of the reasons I'm doing this because some of this drives me crazy. It just has to do with like simple setup and assembly. I do notice a lot of those reviews, those bad ones you see out there, starts with a guy unboxing it, which means he bought it at a box store, he took it home in a box, and he it doesn't know what he's doing. No offense to anybody, but it's the truth. Most dealerships are like my store where we assemble them. You know, every mower on my sales floor has been gassed. We've ran it, checked everything over. So I know everything's in working order when you take it home. And I just feel like that's such a big dissatisfier from those box stores when it's something very simple, a broken piece or something just not assembled properly when they get home because they, they don't do it all day every day like I do. But I genuinely think in that in that price range, the Honda HRN is the best mower on the market. It's the best thing you can buy it in, in full disclosure. Through all the pandemic stuff, through all the supply chain issues we've had, one of my biggest concerns has been that Honda might stop making mowers altogether. Now, I've not heard any, any sort of rumors like that, so I'm not trying to start any. The walk behind mower world is just such a small part of their business when you figure they're in the automotive market, the power sports market, the marine market, you know, I was just kind of worried at some point they might just figure it's just not worth making mowers anymore because we couldn't hardly get any last year and we're going to have the same issues this year. And as you're going to hear me say a lot on this channel, you guys, that's exactly why you support your local dealers. Those are the guys that are going to support you and stand behind the stuff. 99 times out of 100, you're going to have a better experience. But with that being said, I really hope you guys found this helpful. Um... I'm going to continue to beg you guys, hit the subscribe button for me, hit the like button, tell everybody you know, uh, I really do appreciate it, and until next time, we'll see you.